Adam, the White Hair Master. Season 2. Episode 50. While with a group of young people participating in a campfire on the beach to have fun, Adam came across a ghost of a girl. This ghost led a young man in the group to follow it into the sea. Unable to stand by and watch this happen, Adam chased the young man to save him. But since he plunged into the water, it has been a long time without a trace. This made Sarah extremely scared and worried. She wanted to jump into the water to save Adam but was stopped by others. In fact, at this moment, Sarah was highly desperate. She tried several times to pull away from the people trying to hold her back but failed. Too helpless, she could only repeatedly call out Adam's name, tears also streaming down her beautiful face. When Sarah was desperate, the water suddenly shook, followed by something rising. Next was a figure emerging from the water. This person was none other than Adam. He returned alone, but he also had a young man in his arms lured into the sea by the ghost. At this time, he was unconscious, probably from being in the water for too long. Until now, when she saw Adam step ashore, Sarah was not afraid. She quickly wiped the tears from her face and ran to help Adam. The people around also gathered to support the young man to help Adam. At this time, Sarah also noticed a red string in Adam's hand, and it was very tight as if pulling something. Seeing the worried look on Sarah's face and the tears streaking quickly across Sarah's face, Adam gave her a familiar smile to reassure her. He also apologized to Sarah for not clarifying in time, scaring her. Then, he immediately turned to ask about the young man's situation. The rope had been observed before, but it wasn't until Adam stepped ashore that Sarah noticed its singularity. The rope was very tight and kept jerking like it tied something up. The rope curled into many loops at the other end and hung some distance above the ground. Sarah tried to look closely, but she couldn't make out what was tied with the rope in Adam's hand. The fear passed, and then the curiosity rose in Sarah's heart. Unable to endure it any longer, she approached to ask what the strange thing was. Adam understands that if she doesn't explain it clearly to Sarah, she will be distraught. Still, words will never be as effective as seeing them with her own eyes. So Adam placed his finger on Sarah's forehead and began to recite the incantation. A few seconds later, Sarah was able to see what Adam had just caught now. Sarah couldn't hide her shock at the sight of it. It turned out that what Sarah saw was the ghost that lured the young man into the sea. This also explains why Adam was in the water for so long, basically because he saved the young man and had to control this ghost. The tide ghost proved quite helpless, it constantly struggled but could not get out. Suppressing the fear in her heart, Sarah slowly observed the ghost in front of her more closely. From what she could see, she could see that this spirit had been dead for quite some time. Before Sarah's comment, Adam just kept silent and said nothing. Next, he sat down, looked directly at the bound ghost, and asked why it didn't reincarnate but instead harmed innocent people. Despite its terrifying appearance, this ghost is not as fierce as its outsider. To Adam's question, it began to answer. Accordingly, she was a young girl when she was alive, unable to withstand too much pressure simultaneously, this girl committed suicide. But after she died, her body was not found but was stuck in the sea. So day by day, her soul was imprisoned in the cold water, and her body was gnawed by sea creatures, so she had such a shape. Adam was quite sympathetic when he heard what the ghost said, but his actions were completely unacceptable. Adam asked the ghost who had suffered so much already, why does she still want to drag others into the sea to suffer like her? At this time, the ghost also told the truth that it just had no other way. If it couldn't find a replacement, 
its soul would forever be imprisoned in the dark bottom of the water. This ghost also knows that Adam's magic power is extreme, so she immediately asks him to help her escape. After hearing what the ghost had just said, Adam still didn't show any emotion. I just asked him about the time when he committed suicide. Knowing that Adam still had doubts, the female ghost honestly said she had been dead for two years. From this information, Adam immediately turned to Sarah to ask her for some clues. He wanted to confirm that what this ghost said just now was true or just lies to escape. After a while of searching, Sarah got the first information. According to what Sarah found, it was confirmed that two years ago someone in this area saw a young woman jumping into the sea. However, the strange thing is that the body could not be found despite a thorough search. From here, it can be seen that the words that the witch said are entirely correct. At this point, Adam began to ask him about the corpse's location. After knowing the corpse's location, Adam turned to ask the ghost why he committed suicide like that. The ghost seemed to have suppressed her feelings for the last time, so she immediately confided everything as soon as Adam asked. It all comes from the pressures of life. This ghost, when she was alive, was a person with natural talent but was not recognized by others, even family members judge her. From what the ghost just said, Adam realized that most people who commit suicide have similar thoughts and causes, all under the pressure of money and the indifference of loved ones. Adam is very sympathetic to what the ghost has to go through. Still, according to him, everyone has difficulties as a human being. It is important to know how to cope with it. The last thing Adam asked the ghost was as if she regretted her actions. At Adam's question, the regret that came out of the ghost's mouth was clear and dreary. It seems that the time being confined in the cold water has made the ghost think clearly about many things, but everything is now too late. Facing the plight of the ghost, Adam looked at it and promised that he would find the body so that it could be reincarnated with peace of mind. Because he was out walking, apart from the demon rope, Adam did not have any magic tools in his hand. Fortunately, he was at the beach, so Adam started drawing talismans on the fine sand around the ghost. After drawing the talismans, Adam brought his finger to his mouth and bit it lightly. Because the talismans were drawn on the sand, to ensure the spiritual energy of the formation, Adam had to use a lot more blood than usual. However, Adam still did not show any concern about this. The formation had been completed by now. Adam began to cross his arms to chant incantations in front of his chest. A magical light immediately appeared around him. Of course, the normal people around couldn't see this. After chanting the incantation, Adam immediately pointed his hand towards the formation, and a drop of blood from the tip of his finger was also immediately released. As soon as the drop of blood touched the magic formation, the sand around the witch was immediately rolled up. The sand around the sorceress coiled up more and more and soon took on a shape resembling a small vortex. The sand and wind from the formation also flew around, making Sarah unable to bear to cover her face with her hands. Just when Sarah was wondering when this whirlwind would stop, things began to calm down. Finally, the sand returned to its original appearance. Now, the ghost had disappeared entirely. Referring to the young people on the beach, they immediately ran to Adam to inquire about his situation after saving the drowning boy. By the time they got there, a whirlwind had already risen. Seeing the strange situation in front of them, everyone cheered with great excitement and wondered why Adam could do such a thing. Not knowing how to explain to the group, Adam smiled in response. He then turned to Sarah to ask if there was any way to contact the police. Because even though the corpse's location is known, it will be extremely troublesome if it is not skillful, letting the police think that the two are related to the ghost's death. 
Understanding Adam's worries and Sarah herself did not want to get into trouble with the police in such a strange city, so she called a close friend of her grandfather. This person is Michael, he is the head of the police department but retired many years ago. Chief Michael showed Sarah how to talk to the police to avoid unwanted trouble from Sarah's information. 